um, you know, my... Sorry. The, the worst, uh, the biggest fail in uh, uh, tablet PC that's ever been made, it's called Surface, and it's, it's costed about $15,000. Uh, and it showed you basically people are not willing to just sit down and use their hands and things. Uh, uh, when I when I see a touchscreen, the first thing I think of uh, since I was a kid is my arms are gonna hurt after a while, especially if you put it in a not in a supine position, but a certain position that you'd expect, it, like the way you put it on display. I'm thinking, oh gosh, you know, could I could I do this for half a day? Like actually raise my arm? Like I'm not I'm not I'm not fat. I'm actually not fat, but I, I've, I'm pretty strong. But even after a few minutes of just like clicking and raising my arm, I'm just saying, why do why do we do this? You know, it's, there's a reason. Know, there's a reason um, why the traditional chair, keyboard, mouse, monitor has stayed the way it has for many, many years. I mean, even going back pre-computing time when there was typists, it, the traditional sitting there in, in a in a set position has a purpose, and that that purpose is is because over the over the years and whilst um, whilst people were typing and using machines, this was seen as the most comfortable and productive way you could use a computer. Um, the iPads and all, all these tablets, you can hold them up like a newspaper, you can sit down with them, but then for physical working, I cannot see any advantage in doing anything productive on them um, in terms of what I might be requiring um, in my use of a tablet, which is why the netbook is the lesser of two evils. It's smaller. Yes, fair enough, I don't have the same functionality as I do on the desktop because purely it's not as high spec as my, my desktop machine is, but I can get things done and it's traditional enough in its language out in order for me to be comfortable and be relatively productive on it. Um, having said that, I did uh, experiment, just going a little bit off topic, but I did experiment briefly with um, blogging and chatting in IRC um, at the same time doing my site on the HTC Desire, and although it's only got a couple of inches size screen, it's touch, touch keyboard, it wasn't too bad. It probably took me three times longer to do anything, but then that's to be expected because it's a phone, it's not designed for as a as a desktop computer, but it was quite interesting. So, um, yes, sorry, Roy, I'll, uh, I'll let you get back to you. Yeah, well, the way I use the computer is more like a TV now, so I kind of sit back and sometimes even lie down. If I just read something, I can do that too. But the uh, the usage of a of a computer, uh, you know, people people try and paint this picture of people using tablets lying on a couch, and I don't know what they're supposed to be doing. No, uh, but I, I think I think the, the the showcase they would do is like some good looking girl, and I'm sorry I bring up the girl analogy too, because I, I think that the people they market this to is that's the thing to use for, um, you know, for sales and whatever. So. Uh, it's like a girl kind of lying down, and she has like a photo of like like her son or something in the picture, and she's like just like flipping over between the photos on the couch, and that's like the the way they market these things. But I don't think many people use the tablets. Like I don't think that's what they do. Like sit down and watch albums with you know computer. Um, originally, uh, the the purpose of just using a computer is to actually have some input and stuff, and actually interact with things like text, so if you sit down and use a tablet, how do you type? Uh, how, because you need to have one hand actually holding the thing, and how do you, what do you click on? Like, how do you use the, the thing? If you're browsing the internet also, you need some second hand or something like browse and kind of scroll at the same time, and I don't know. I, I just, didn't, didn't Apple, uh, I could be wrong here, but it wasn't there for the iPad, that a device that you could plug in which and I hope I'm describing this well enough for you to get a mental picture of what I'm talking about. But what it did is you put it, you put it on its stand so it was facing you on a table. And you plugged in this device and it would project an image of a keyboard onto your desk, onto your table, that you could actually touch the, the table. And, uh, the, That's existed for ages, but, has uh, it? Oh, right. but I don't think they would actually mass market anything like because it's crap. For, for <laughs> it's really nice in marketing, you know, they'll show because you don't feel the keyboard. As far as you can think about it, if you move a few inches to the left, Okay, and you carry on typing your sentence. How do you know that you haven't been moved uh, aside? Yeah, that, I so mean, I, I, I didn't know. And then you'll just basically keep on typing wrongly, and there I is mean, no I, way for the keyboard to correct that. As I was saying, I was um, I only had really a, a passing interest in tablets, but it was something I read, and I, I assumed it was just a, a, a concept at the time when I read it, and then I didn't really look for anything more on it after that. But no, I couldn't see how particularly it would work uh, very well. It certainly wouldn't change my view on tablets anyway. Um, 
if we're finished on that line, I just want to make a very, very quick mention of a piece of software. Um, and I've got a little bit of a story to go with it as well. Um, my wife has a massive collection of movies and uh, books. And uh, she was looking for a way to catalogue them now in Linux and uh, with free and open source software. There's plenty of alternatives uh, and packages out there to catalogue your uh, your collections and uh, I think in this age even with digital downloads people are building up massive libraries of uh, material and we had a little look about and I could list all the different options that I, I looked at but I, I think I'll cut it short and just tell you the one that we found which was the best and uh, my wife instantly uh, found easy to use and uh, is currently using it and it's a package called GC Star um, the link will be on the show notes it's um, well, it's, it's, it's a cataloger for your, uh, for your videos, books, music, you name it, it catalog them. But where uh, GC Star is quite unique, if we take the example of movies, is that um, it'll access IMDb database and a few other databases online and uh, uh, abstract the image of the cover of the DVD so that when you're cataloging your collection, you can actually physically see uh, the disc there and it makes it easier to visualize what it is you're, you're looking at. So she's been messing on with that. And uh, yes, it's very, very good. It's currently in version 1.6.1. It's That version, I believe, was released August last year and it hasn't been updated since. The, the project isn't dead. It's just, uh, it's. I think it's currently it's stored. Yeah, it's and mature. I think, yeah, yeah, it's, it's mature. <laughs> I wanted to try and avoid using a buzzword, but it's in um, 1.6.1 last August, I think, was the last release, so you'll probably find the most recent version. When was in... the last release of Windows, though? Sorry? The last release of Windows. No, that's the last release of... Uh... No, 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 oh. what's the last release of Microsoft Windows, for example? I think it's, uh, I think it's October 22nd or something, just the day after the results in 2009. Nine, yeah. Oh, yeah. And nine, yeah. And when was the last release of Ubuntu? That ah, was... <laughs> so you could think Windows is dead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, anyway, after that destruction of Roy, um, he's throwing me off a bit. Yeah, this um, GC Star, I need to, to bang on about it. It's a very, very simple package, though, and the fact that my my good wife can sit down with a brand new package and instantly use it. Uh, it shows at least that it's very intuitive and very uh, self-explanatory. Really, really great project. I strongly suggest you, if you can, to support it in any way you can because it handles a plethora of different uh, mediums and different uh, collections that you can do for everything from comic books to board games, wines even. Um, really, really good. So um, the link will be on the show notes and check it out. I thought I'd just mention it. I've heard it before. I've heard about it before it's several the, times. It's, it's, it's the pretty well known. Yeah, it's the amalgamation of um, yeah. another couple of projects. I believe the movies um, database software, whatever that was called, was a previous project. They got amalgamated into GC Star as being a sort of collection of um, collection um, catalogers. And no, it, it is. It's it's very very good. Um, so yes, so that will be. Uh, that will be available in the show notes. Um, so I'll make a very patent uh, type of note about you, you call it an alternative at some stage, and and that's just the case where I think we have to be careful about vocabulary because a lot of people will say, uh, uh, "What does Linux offer in terms of alternatives?" And I say, "Alternatives to what?" You know, mm-hmm. Linux is not a reactionary thing; like it's just got applications to do things. And you could actually look the other way. I mean, if I use Windows, so what's what's going to burn CDs in a yeah. decent way? And I'm thinking, what's the alternative to K3B? Uh, you know, so so to call, so so we we kind of play along with the notion that Linux is just trying to copy something else and 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 has to try and replace something different. And and then we highlight the uh, the stereotype that that Linux is just like a second-class citizen trying to implement things that already exist. And also, it usually implies that the Linux things are less good. So you might say, a Fire- what is Firefox? It's an alternative to, my- to Internet Explorer. So it kind of sounds like, hmm, Firefox yeah. is like, if you don't really have the full thing, you could have something else. Like, no, it's a, it's a fair comment. It, it, does, it does sound like the second cousin of the, of the original product, which would be Internet Explorer, when you say alternative. It's, a, it's something I hadn't actually considered before, to be honest with you. And yes, it's... Uh, Looking at it in that respect, it certainly does seem uh, a, a bad choice of words. Um, 
Yeah. But unfortunately, I think, though, I, I think in the mindset of the th- hundreds and hundreds of thousands of users around the world that believe that Microsoft is the only supplier of software for a PC, yeah, I, I think that, yeah. the word, people say word processor, and you know, it's not the only thing you can call a, a typing input layout program. And lots of people still say uh, um, PowerPoint 